So here we'll look at aeration of water. This may come across as really easy. Uh, you can see here we're just kind of a pedal system where we're kind of mixing and splashing the water around, uh, adding uh, oxygen and air uh, to that water to help keep it well oxygenated. But there's uh, some systems here I'm going to describe that you may not be familiar with. So first off, well, large scale, if we uh, by pumping water into the air and letting gravity cause it to fall back, creating a passive method of aeration, it could be a really uh, strong pump, I mean, it really high, causing it to fall back, or it can be just kind of these uh, smaller pumps here, again, adding, pumping it up and letting it kind of fall back through gravity, kind of in this kind of passive form of aeration, which can be very effective, and it's used a lot uh, for display purposes and fountains to... Uh, keep the water aerated in areas that it may be in public display, such as parks. Uh, the active form of aeration for growers uh, is commonly used by injecting air into the water. And this typically uses an air stone. We're taking an air stone, putting it at the bottom of a tank, uh, and using an air pump to pump water, uh, to pump air down through a tube, and then letting the, the air bubbles kind of come through the water and mixing it that way. This uses oxygen that's naturally in the environment, uh, and this depends on increasing the water surface contact with the atmosphere. That's kind of how we're, you're helping aerate the water. The bubbles here are kind of, for the most part, passing right through, reaching the surface and kind of stirring that surface, and it's that surface contact, that surface stirring that's occurring that is allowing the aeration process to occur. Something you may not be familiar with or may have heard of but not related to this aspect is the use of electrolysis. So electrolysis of water is a decomposition of water into oxygen and hydrogen gas due to the passage of electrical current. What happens is we have our water, and we're separating it out into its hydrogen and oxygen components. By this process, electrolysis, this creates very small nanoscale, so really, really small uh, bubbles that form. How this looks here, and there's a comparison between an air stone, where this is taking an active air pump, uh, pumping air through here and allowing the bubbles to pass through the water, uh, causing our bubble effect here. And then we have the electrolysis. It almost looks like there's like a small fog occurring underneath the water. Uh, O2 Grow is marketed towards growers, and this Twin Star is also marketed towards aquarium enthusiasts, but they both kind of operate on the same electrolysis form versus the air stone. The O2 Grow uh, company, they're a division of Oxygen Research Group, and their technology platform holds four unique patents. With their electrolysis technique, they claim 50% or more dissolved oxygen than a standard bubbler. Uh, their slogan is kind of interesting. It says, get out of the Stone Age, in the sense that they feel their system is creating these small nanobubbles, uh, actively oxygenating the water much more effectively than a typical air stone. It does require a little bit of a setup. There's a cost involved with this. Uh, there's electricity required. So these are all things to consider as growers. I include two YouTube links down here. Remember, the, in the description, there's a link to all these slides. You can click on these links uh, and see some of the company info there. But just wanted to provide you with something when you're looking uh, at actively aerating water. Probably may not have thought of electrolysis, and it might be something worth consideration because of the increased surface area here of the producing of the nanobubbles if you're really looking at maximizing uh, the aeration and oxygen you're adding to your water.